أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه ولا وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد وبرزز دوت الله الله سبحانه وتعالى بلسنس بي أبون هز مسجر صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله after finishing the uh, book of etiquettes of seeking knowledge the etiquettes of seeking knowledge al hidya al talib al ilm li doctor bakr abu zaid rahimahullah we uh, are going to start inshallah a new uh, book and the choice of uh, the class uh, was the book of uh, the world of jinn and the devils عالم الجن والشياطين The World of Jinn and Devils by Sheikh Umar Dr. Umar Suleyman Al-Ashqar Umar Suleyman Al-Ashqar He had a series of eight books of Aqeedah based on the ayah آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه المؤمنون The Messenger of Allah and all the believers following him believe in Allah Azza wa Jal uh, all of them believe in Allah, His angels, His books, رسله, His messengers. Um, in another ayah, the word اليوم الآخر is mentioned. Okay? Five. And in the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu said the iman bil qada wal qadar. The predestination and the decree of Allah Azza wa so those are the six pillars of faith. Iman billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rusuli wa liyawm al-akhiri wa al-qadari khayrihi wa sharrihi in عند الله عز وجل. So jinn wa shayateen comes as a supplement to the topic of the angels. We have angels. We are humans. We believe there are angels. So it's also important to believe in the existence of jinn wa shayateen. Some people deny that actually. Some people deny the existence of jinn and shayateen. And they think it is like energy or like, you know, some negative energy as they say, you know, negative energy, positive energy. Some also deny the existence of angels altogether. And they will interpret the ayat of the Qur'an differently. Taman jinn mentioned in Qur'an, surah, there is a surah called jinn. قُلُوا حِيَ إِلَيَنَّ وَاسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ in the jinn, nafar, number of people. We sarafna ilayka nafara min al jinn, number of the members of jinn community. We send them to you to listen to the Quran. So it mentioned in the Quran. Shayateen al ins wal jinn. You know, there are shayateen or the devils of jinn and ins. Shayateen are the ones who went to the extreme or the devious ones or the evil ones. As there are good humans and bad humans, there are good jinn and bad jinn. And bad jinn, they ha have different categories. There is afarit, afrit, qala afritum min al jinn. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, have superpowers. Some of the jinn have normal powers, superpowers, extreme powers. Some of them using those powers in good, some of them using it in, in bad. You know, as we will see, inshallah. So the jinn are there. Um, available there. Some people there, subhanAllah, as the Sheikh mentioned in his introduction, saying that writing in this is kind of like not necessary, or talking about it, it is something not necessary. Um, and just don't take too much time in it and so on. Uh, the Sheikh answers that by saying that the assumption on which, on which this statement based is wrong. They're thinking that the goal is to raise some interest or being curious about the superstition and superpowers and all of that. While that's not actually the goal. And if this is the goal, it is not the right goal to study this. <laughs> We're not studying it for that goal. It's something interesting all oh, it us. Like the youth want a halqa about jinn because it is interesting and all that. Now, as a Muslim, as a believer, we learn about things because of one or two reasons. 
is to benefit from it or to recognize the harm to avoid it. Wadih? We understand that? So it's either it is to, re to realize or recognize that it is good, so we follow it, or we reach the conclusion it is bad, so how we protect ourselves from it. إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًّا Allah says, Shaitan is truly an enemy for you, so take him as an enemy. So you need to know about your enemy. Characteristic of your enemy. إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ وَقَبِيلُ مِنْ حَيْسُ لَتَرَوْنَهُمْ He comes to you and all his uh, soldiers from where you do not see. You do not see them, but they see you. So Allah is telling us the description of our enemy. Correct? Allah is telling us that shaitan yuaswis yuaswis wa fi sudur al-nasi min al-jinnati wa al-nasi he whispers in your heart put ideas in your heart evil ideas Allah Azza Jal told us the conversation between Allah and the shaitan when the shaitan told him how I'm going to do it I'm going to come from their right from their left from you know and I'm going to participate with them in their money and in their children so knowing about this topic, not necessarily, is just because it's interesting, but rather to know how to avoid. And also to know that, subhanAllah, the, among the jinn, they are Muslims. They are our brothers and sisters as well. We don't know how they look like, we don't know their characteristics and this, but we know their presence and their existence. They have families, they have children, they have schools, they have education, they have trades, they have currency. Everything that happens to humans is carbon copy for the world of the jinn. But in a different capacity, in a different way, in a different dimension, different being, different existence. You know, you, you see the viruses, you don't see the viruses, but you see their effect. You know, the virus you don't see. But once it hits you, it hits you, it brings you down. You, you, don't, you don't see how did it enter, how did it go, you breathe it, you touch something, what, what did you do? Right? You don't know. But then it starts changing your whole system. In the spiritual arena, it's, it's like that. And the connection between physical and spiritual is there. For you to understand, Allah created Adam السلام, part from earth and part from heaven. Part physical and part not physical. Part physical is the dirt, the soil. And the part spiritual is the ruh that Allah blew in Adam. We don't know where is the ruh, what shape it looks like, what it is, but it is there. Once it departs this body, this body goes down to earth. It has no value. Like this person talking, walking, and smiling, and doing all these kind of things. Once the ruh leaves, which we don't know, doesn't have a shape, that body collapses. It becomes nothing. It becomes rotten. It goes down to earth. Correct? So that's the, there is a relationship. Yani. They are there together. Body, pay attention to this one. The body, how it becomes in pain, if you poke. If I bring a needle and poke you, ouch! Yeah? And if somebody brings a knife and does like this, you bleed. Type. If somebody punches, it bruises or breaks. Correct? Uh, all of these things can happen to the ruh, but not in the physical way. Okay? So somebody can poke the ruh. Somebody can break something. Somebody can bruise something. And that's why they say we, there is an evil eye. There is a jinn presence. Hmm? So it happens like that. So when a person looks to someone and says, Oh man, look at this. They did not poke them with a needle. They did not punch them. But that feeling created some negative energy that traveled to the other spiritual side and affected it as if you punched someone in the face. So that's why that person, the ruh is affected, so because the ruh is attached to the body, sometimes the person is knocked down and becomes sick. And we have to read Ruqya Quran on them so they can stand up again. And the doctor said nothing wrong. 
You, you seeing the mechanism of this? It's like that. Also, some people will do that even extreme. The sihr, sihr, and a'mal is to disturb that energy. You know, disturbing the energy. It is like if you enter a room and it becomes dark, your eyes disturbed. Or you hear an unpleasant sound, your ear is disturbed. Okay? Or somebody start pushing you in the dark, your body is disturbed. Same thing can happen to the energy of the ruh as well. It is not settled, it's not stabilized. And some of the jinn will do that, because you don't see the jinn. So some people will connect to the world of the jinn, and those jinn bad, they make deals with the humans, and Allah said that in the Quran, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَزَادُوهُمْ رَحَقًا They seek refuge in the men of the jinn, so they increase their trouble. Because you ask the jinn something, the jinn ask you also something. And that something can be shirk of Allah, can be humiliating the Quran, can be doing some wrong things, slaughtering for other than Allah. That's why you find people doing sihr, they said, give me a chicken this, give me a goat that, throw the blood, write this with the blood, do this, do that, go to the graveyard. All of these things the jinn asks for the person to worship the shaitan. And then they will do the things for you. What they will do? They will go disturb the ruh of that person. Because you do not see, they will disturb this spiritual energy around them. So the person feels scared, feels bad, feels unbalanced, forgetful of things. That's what it do, does. That when, when you do the dhikr of Allah, you kind of build that fence around you. Fence. I'll give you an example. Have you ever before going to sleep, we're going to sleep, And that second, when you are delving into sleeping, you know that, I can describe that moment, when you are going, خلاص, you know, you're about to go to sleep. And then you find yourself like this. It happened to you before? If it happened to you, or it happened to your child or somebody in front of you, that is a moment that the jinn try to disturb the, that body. And the angels whom Allah uh, assigned to protect you, fended them off. Go away. A'yun al-jinn. A'yun, jinn waiting. You know, they are looking at the person and waiting for an entrance. A weakness. That's why we said extreme fear, extreme happiness, or extreme sadness, or insanity, like, you know, somebody like started like doing insane things, like those who are jumping on music and stuff like this, like putting the music and jumping up and down and all this, that's insanity. So the person is not stable, is not acting like a human being. Right? So it's just it went out of their human tranquility. That is an entrance. When a person is extremely sad, that's an entrance. When a person is extremely happy, that's an entrance. When a person is extremely scared, that's an entrance. That's why we have a dua for each one. When you're happy, you say Alhamdulillah. You do such the shukr, right? Why you do such the shukr? To disturb that line of, oh yeah, and they do doing all these kind of things. <laughs> this why people doing all this stuff. And it says, Alhamdulillah, and you're going sajda down. When you come up, already it went, that moment of excitement already is, uh, subsidized. You understand? Like a person who's angry, they tell you go do, do. It's kind of you're distracting your mind and the water touching you is kind of like has a different feeling, different impact on your body. Because all this fiery feeling of anger, the water comes on it, it calms you down. And it distracts you also from that course. It's like somebody said, I'm gonna go to the said, just, just come here, come here. Look at this frappuccino over here. They're very nice. <laughs> Taste it. They taste it, خلاص, they kind of like, um, all right, you know? Like that person, uh, like that Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab was intending to kill Rasulullah. And going like, خلاص, يعني, that's it. Either I kill him or he, I'm killed today. There is no third option. And I'm, I'm, I'm done. And when one of the companions saw that in his eye, he distracted him. He told him, 
وي جو تو كل محمد واتش يور سيستر فيرست سي فريم اوف مايند سويتش ان 1 سكند قلت له ها ما سيستر وات از يا شي از بيليفينغ سو از ديستراكتد ناو سو فروم كيلينغ تو فايندينغ اوت وات از جوينغ اون يو انديرستاند ذا فريم اوف مايند سو وي هاف دعاء ات داز جاست ذات تو يو سو وين يو ار افريد يو مينشن الله your heart becomes comfortable because now you are connected with Allah you know Allah is more powerful and all of that it takes that fear out so it blocks the jinn from entering from that weak spot when you are so happy make sajda and you do when you are so sad you say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahil al azim inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un you know all of this the intention is to calm you down so the jinn do not have so when you go to sleep Because you are a person among the people who pray and among this and that, jinn want to disturb you because maybe you forgot to do your witr. Huh? You sleep on wudu, but you forgot that time. You just slept on a place that you normally don't go to sleep. Huh? You did not wipe your bed. Something. And you forgot. So the jinn said, oh, I got my chance. But you are a person of habit. So Allah Azza wa Jal sent the angels called the Al-Mu'aqqibat. له معقبات من بين يديه ومن خلفه يحفظونه من امر الله سوره الرعد الله سيد ذير انجلز ذير نيمز معقبات ذير وان عليكم لحافظين حفظ تو 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 بروتكت يو اند دي ويل بروتكت يو وين يو ار دوينج ذا ثينجز ذات ذا انجلز لايك الصلاه والذكر سميلينج جود وكلين وبيور يو نو سبيكينج جود انجلز ار اراوند يو The opposite, shayateen are around you. All right? So when you do like this, you are shaking them off, actually saying, far away from me. Because if you continue in that sleep, the jinn will enter. Right? But, you know, the angels kind of like make you awake and d- disturbed, so the jinn run away. And then you say, Alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, a'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. When this happens, then Allah protects you subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Right? And then you calm down. Or you sit and read قُلُوا اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ عُدْ رَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ عُدْ رَبِّ النَّاسِ Like this and then wipe yourself. Don't take this lightly. These are the things that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us. When you read in the water and you drink it, it protects your inside. When you read on your hand and blow, the Quran becomes like you know, like shield for you. When you wipe the bed like this, and you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, so it becomes also cleaning for the area around you. When you have a good smell in the room, you know, we tell people all the time, make the room smell good. You know, this air freshener is a good thing. If it causes you allergy, find the one that it does not cause you allergy. <laughs> Natural one. Al-Bukhur is good. العطر is good, you know, بخور, the original بخور will not cause you allergy. Just you smoke it, you know, maybe even once a week, no problem. But keep the good smell at your house. Okay? The good smell at your house. Even, subhanallah, when we go to the bathroom, take a ba- bath or a shower or something like that, some people, they will do بخور after they finish the bath. Like, you know, when finish the bath, they have this بخور on, on that thing, right? And then they let the بخور come on their body. Or they wear, you know, a loose clothes around and let the bukhur come inside. Yeah, the jinn and shayateen, they hate that. They hate it. So it goes out. Inshallah, we'll talk about, we'll expound on those things whenever we are explaining the book. Today is just introduction and talking about the book in general. Now people, subhanAllah, as the Sheikh has mentioned, uh, Um, there are many things and many texts in the Quran and the Sunnah talking about those jinn and um, their life and their aqil and they have mind as well thinking it's not like animals يعني. animals they don't have a brain to think they're programmed Some of them we don't see, like viruses. Some of them, they are macroscopic. Mm -hmm. But they don't have a brain. They have a program. Two different things, right? They go according to it. 
The virus adapts, but that's how it goes. But it does not distinguish. And once it sees the environment, it will be effective, right? But human beings, you can change things. You have aql. Jinn also, they have that aql. Our life is none but a struggle between us and shaitan. From the moment they came down to earth, Allah Azza wa Jal told Adam, he is your adu, he is your enemy. قَالَ اهْبِطُوا مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُو There was nobody except Adam, his wife, on one side, and Iblis on the other side. But there was nobody else. When they came down, they came down with that enmity. So Allah Azza Jal gave the shaitan the ability to sway people and to deviate people, but give the human the tool to defend easily. But some people, they choose not to. How shaitan defeats people? Not because he is strong, because they are weaker than supposed to be. As I always say, shaitan wins not because he is strong. No, he has a plan. He has a plan. Shaitan's army is not because it is huge in number. No, it is united on the same goal. It has a purpose. It does not deviate from its purpose. Our purpose is to destroy mankind by any means. That's it. So they will do whatever it is. But the humans, we are distracted, we are uh, confused, we fight each other, and we forget about the main enemy. The Sheikh mentioning that in the first uh, chapter of this book, he would talk about this world of jinn, their origin, their creation, their names, their types, their food, their drink, their marriages, the, where they live, residence, their rights, animals, yani, mounts, and their abilities that Allah gives them. And will answer the dalil or the, the uh, uh, claims of those who deny their existence. That's the chapter number one, chapter number one in the book. Chapter number two, the reason of their creation. What is the goal? Allah created us to worship him. Also Allah created jinn to worship him. So jinn also created. And how the message of Rasulullah is to them as well. That's chapter number two. Chapter number three, the Sheikh says this is the core of the book. Chapter number three is the core of the book and it has few points. Point number one, the reasons of the fight or the enmity between human and shaitan. <coughs> Point number two, the short-term goals and the long-term goals of the shaitan. Part number three, or point number three, we're still in chapter three, huh? point number three, the ways of shaitan to deviate, different methods. Point number four, how the shaitan is the commander-in-chief of any shaitan. He is the one highest authority of all the shaitan who deviate human. There is, I have one leader who is Iblis of Adam, yani Iblis who worked with Adam, worked against Adam. He's the same one, and all of this from his children and his offspring. Point number five, the different traps of shaitan that he traps humans with, Masaid al-Shaitan. And then the Sheikh said in this chapter, I finished it, was talking about the whispering of shaitan, which is his main weapon to corrupt people and plant corruption in their heart. Chapter four, he said that I talked about 
few cases or few issues or few ways that the shayateen deviate people. How the shayateen takes the form, physical form, to talk to humans. And what corruption did that cause? It happens. It happened and it happens. What is the authenticity and how far of summoning spirits? You know, spirits, like people said, spirit summoning sessions. And they start seeing news about things. And actually there is a truth to it. Yeah. But they are not summoning spirits. They are summoning shayateen. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you, inshallah, it'll be a little bit uh, freaky, but we'll talk about it, yeah. So take it from academic study, you know. We're, we're not going to have a jinn coming or anything like that. <laughs> we're not going to allow that to happen. But those people who say that we talk to the spirit, there is no spirit that they talk to. You know, they cannot make a sp bring a spirit of somebody who died to talk to. What they're actually talking to is a shaitan. And that is very for real. Many of them fake. Most of them are fake people, right? But if it happens, it happens like that. There is a qareen or a shaitan who will give that. And some people, they make tashkhir to that one. They do a deal, and then they have that deal. They will ask you, what's your name? What's your mom's name? And they will tell you secrets that only you know. Come on, they are... There are secrets that you know. I mean, they, are, they are in the past. They cannot, pre pre uh, they cannot pre predict the future. But they will tell you, oh, you have a son like this. Oh, your husband told you like this. Oh, you're afraid of such and such. And then you become like, whoa. Okay, thousand dollar. Five hundred dollar. You know? And you pay because you want more. <laughs> now, they get you. Once they get you, musibah. Musiba becomes a, an addiction and fear. And they work on fear, right? Stop it right away. But there are some people with that ability. There are some people with that ability. Ism A, what's your name? What is the name of your mother? Sometimes when they are so powerful and they have strong connections, they will not even ask you. They will look at you and they said, Eh, Salam alaikum fulan, how are you? And they will say your name. Oh, you live in Houston, and you go to Masjid Salam, and you have this, and you kind of like, whoa. <laughs> Said, you want more? Hundred bucks. I can tell you what's happening. So, so there are, there are things like that. How far can jinn know about the unseen? And we will also talk about this corruption and the problem. Fourth, the jinn and their relationship with the, uh, what do they call the, those round things, what they call, if uh, UFOs, oh. the UFOs. Yeah. The fifth chapter, <coughs> what are the weapons that us as hu humans need to fight shaitan in this battle? The sixth and the last chapter, the wisdom behind creating shayateen to start with. May Allah Azza wa Jal benefit the author with what he did. May Allah have mercy on, on his soul. So it's very important to study this topic, as I mentioned, especially it's a topic of interest. And I want you to we start uh, talking about these uh, topics from the realistic perspective. Uh, Subhanallah, Allah created a human being. Allah Azza wa said that he created the heavens and earth for us. From him to you. The clouds, the sky, the, uh, the uh, planets, the stars, the sun, the moon, 
all this atmosphere in the sky. And on earth, mountains, trees, oceans, rivers, fish, animals, mountains, all of this also to serve us. So someone that important and that powerful, you think Allah Azza Jal will let the creation just have control over them? Of course not. The answer is not. Otherwise, Allah would have give the snakes or the wild animals the power to devour humans. Right? But they're not. Imagine and if the ocean opens and the fish can come and walk on, uh, on land. And sharks and whales and all this can have life on land like crocodiles kill. Can you imagine the fear that will happen with this million, millions of numbers? Yani can you imagine fish coming and crawling on earth? Yani? Allah gives the fish that ability. But it has a job and it has a role. Allah limited it. Correct? Allah limited the habitat of the snakes, of the lions. Of the, limited. Even though it is vicious and all that. Can you imagine yani, if it can travel thousands of miles with that ability and that power? And I'm always telling people these things to trigger, you know, their, their mind. You know, the certain animals, targets, cheetah, the cheetah, it, run, it is the fastest animals on earth, animal on earth, correct? Cheetah. It runs like 120 miles per hour. That is the highest speed. But for how long? Few seconds. Yeah? Can you imagine if it maintains this? For like uh, an hour, like a car, yani, goes 120 miles. That means it covers 120 miles in any direction for an hour. Do you understand why? So if it, if, it, if it runs for one minute, that's a big destruction for <laughs> thousands of, of creatures around. And if it can run for another minute and for a third minute and for an hour, so all 120 mile radius for one animal only, you see how danger, how, how much danger and terror it can bring. You say, subhanallah. Okay? So I want you to think like that. So there is jinn, and the jinn can do this and can do that. Come on, man. We have more than the jinn threatening us, you know. More than the jinn around. There's flies and mosquitoes and all that. If Allah Azza gives it extra ability, it will destroy humanity in a couple of minutes. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A few minutes. It doesn't take hours. Just, you know, it multiplies. SubhanAllah. Allah makes its lifespan very short. The flies and the mosquitoes and all of that. Just to have the ecosystem, yani, the ecosystem. But if, if, this mosquito does inject something and the person dies. It, it can have that power. But Allah Azza Jal saved us and Allah gave us the ability, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hifz. Fallahu khayrun hafizan. So when you talk about jinn, yes. You take care, you watch, protect yourself, don't let your guards down, but don't be extra afraid. Yani. There are many other threats around us. Every time you drive your car, you are threatened. Every time you drive your car sleepy, you are even more threatened. And if you drive your car the best, the possibility of drunk driver or another person make a mistake is way worse than a jinn hurting you. Way worse. And the possibility of the jinn is 0, 0, 0, 0.1% to get hurt by the jinn. But the rest, 99% every time you drive your car, you have a possibility of getting hurt. And Allah saves you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do your du'as, you do your things, inshallah, no problem. Also, I wanted to mention that this topic, the fake information or the unauthentic information is way more than the authentic one. Every 10 sentences, you find one right and the nine wrong. <laughs> like, if the, every 10 cases that they come and say, Ya Shaykh, I have a jinn or I have a sihr, every Ten cases, nine of them are no, nothing. You know the subliminal messages, subliminal message, 
like brainwashing. Like someone start thinking about many things and something until they kind of like see it or they believe. Right? So the kids, for example, or someone says, you know, they are afraid of dark or they think that there is someone watching them. And that thinking, that thought keeps increasing, increasing, increasing until they will swear to you that they saw something moving. And I believe them. And I believe them. But there was nothing moving. Okay? There was nothing moving. It is their thought that it came to existence. I'll give you an example. Did it happen to you at any time of your life that sometimes you kind of like have a smell of food without that food available? The smell comes to you? Because the brain was so focused on something that you think you smelled it, but there was no smell because there is no food there that smells. You smell lemon. You think about lemon and suddenly you, for a split of a second, it smells like zesty, like a lemon. But there was no lemon and there was no, no smell actually. There was no smell, but sometimes you kind of like hear someone calling your name. Or you know, like, I heard somebody, did you hear that? I didn't hear anything. But your brain, the channel was open as if you heard a voice, but there was no voice. You saw like something like running in front of you, there was no shadow or anything, but that's a, an idea that over, overcame you or that idea that took over that little tiny center in your brain and then a moment come when the channel was right, you think something ran in front of you. But can something run in front of you and see it? Yes. But as I tell you, it is like 1% on the maximum. Yeah. Possibility that you'll see this over your life. You'll see a jinn like a shadow in front of you. Because the jinn is as scared of you as you are scared of them. And we'll explain why later. That's why they don't appear. They don't appear. Because if they appear, they become in trouble. You know, to go back again to become a jinn. Yeah. So the topic is surrounded by all this superstition. And because jinn you don't see. Of course, anything you don't see, people exaggerate. <laughs> you know? Um, like, you know, somebody make a rumor and people start building on it. You know, they say, you know, somebody came from uh, another planet. There is a, an alien in Area 50, whatever they call it, 55 or 52. Type. First, you believe there is an Area 52. <laughs> Second, you have to believe that there are secrets there. Third, that among the secrets that they establish communication with aliens. And above all of this, one of the aliens, mashallah, paid Earth visit. Yeah. But people forget all of that. Right? They said, the alien came on Earth. Have you seen? No. Okay. Tall, big, big eyes. Blah, blah, blah. And then they put in the TV. How would you know? How do we know? Like shaitan is always red and have two horns and have a big tail and the tail is like an arrow. Where did you get this description from? Oh, somebody made it. Prove it wrong. And instead of proving it right, you will say, this is the, prove it wrong. Why? You know, some, one time there was a Hollywood made a movie, I forgot the movie, but the shaitan came in a very, uh, Nice look, yani, suit and a tie, huh? and a very smiling guy, and very nice, and you know. Actually, that would be more fitting. In my opinion, shaitan would come to humans like that, not in a scary image. Yani. He does not want to scare you. He wants you to love him, not hate or scare. Yani, the shaitan's idea is not to scare you. It's actually to become friend. It's to follow. That's why he, either he, show, he comes in a very nice picture, or use somebody in a very nice format. That's why you'll find all these cunning people, they always look good and sleeky and all that. You know, sleek and all that. Or he will stay hidden. Because if you see, you're going to be scared and run away. Sah? Yeah, if, if, if we agree that shaitan's image is that awful, which is, it's okay. We agree on that one. The reason he does not appear, because he's afraid. If he appears, you run away from him. He has no control to bring you back. <laughs> 
His strength is that you don't see him and he sweet talk you. Like someone have a radio show. And then they talk with a beautiful, nice, soothing voice. So everyone have an image of that talk show host, man or woman. Yeah. And until they see them, they see them and say, what? Is this the person who speaks? No, man. Oh, scary. They don't want to see him again. They don't want to listen to him again. Even though the voice is so sweet, right? Ah, that's why those authors of those beautiful books, they are not public figures. They're not. You know, those who write these amazing stories, and they're not public figure. The producer of the, of the, of the movie is, is not, it does not come in the movie. You know, if you say, oh, this movie is amazing, and that person made the movie, and you see them and you see them, oh, they made the movie. This is the guy who made the movie. I don't want to watch any movie from him anymore. But they put the star in front of you, the actress. Huh? Good looking, exactly. Advertisement. If you see the guy, or if you see how they make the processed meat, the hot dogs and stuff, you don't want to buy it, right? But they bring a famous basketball or player or something like that, and eating the hot dog. Everybody wants to eat a hot dog now. So the image is the most important thing. So for shaitan, most important thing is to stay hidden and to use an image. To use someone from behind. Now you know why they don't appear? It's not because they are like uh, confident or they will devour you. No, they don't want you to run away from them. Because if you run away from them, you will protect yourself. If they appear in their image, you run away from them, you close your door. Door is closed, now how they can access you? They don't have that power. You have to put your guard down. You have to invite them in. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I did not have any authority upon you. Shaitan does not have authority upon you. No jinn have authority upon you. They will come in because you're weak. Because you're down. Because you're not protecting yourself. You close your door and say, Bismillah. Allah will protect you, but you got to close your door. Rasulullah Wasallam said, yes. You depend on Allah, but you have to do the means. Okay? He said, before you sleep, don't leave the cup up like this. Or the pot up. You have to cover it, if it has a lid or a cover, or bring it up. You know, when you wash the dishes and things like that, you have wash pots. Either you dry them, or you put them in the washer machine, it's closed. Or if you are on the counter, you have to make them upside down. And the cups also upside down. Or put a lid on it. If there is no lid, you put like a spoon or something on top. And say, Bismillah. That's before you sleep. Yeah. So you take the means. Close the door, say, Bismillah. Before we eat, you say, Bismillah. You protect yourself. So this world, they don't have authority upon you. Shaitan said, I don't have authority upon you. What is my power? I invite you and you come running to me. So I just give you the idea then. You want to go there? Yeah, it's nice, it's amazing. Okay, let me try. You go try and say, oh, it's not nice and amazing. Well, I did not force you. Then you become kafir. It's nice, man. No salah, nothing and all that. Once you come, you lost everything. So, I, I, I just told you why you have to listen to me. Blame yourself. Why are they called jinn? Jinn, the jim and the tununs, nun shaddayani, means something hidden or something covering, something dark, something not visible, visible. And we have the root for three different words. Jinnah, kasra, وَجَنَّةَ فَتْحَ وَجُنَّةَ ضَمَّةَ See the Arabic uh, words are very uh, mathematical in nature and they derive the same root, derives different formats. So jim and noon means something hidden. Top Jannah, what is Jannah translated? Garden or paradise, right? 
So what is the relationship with this? Always a garden is fenced off from the eyes of the people. You have your backyard, you put what? A fence around it, right? So people don't see you. You have your privacy. That's why it's called Jannah. Means covered, not everybody has access to it. So it's fenced off by trees or by a fence or by something. So the word Jannah. Tayyip. Jannah is the shield. You know, people go to war or you have like heavy clothes in the winter as a Jannah from the cold. And you have the bancho or something like that or the umbrella Jannah from the rain. Yani when water is coming on your head and you have this umbrella, the umbrella is Jannah to your head. The coat is Jannah to your body. The armor is Jannah in the war time. All right? And so on. Bulletproof. The bulletproof uh, chest. Um, yeah, bulletproof uh, vest is Jannah. You know what I'm talking about, right? The bulletproof uh, you know, vest that the police and the, and the army and all that. That's called Jannah. So when a bullet comes, it does not penetrate. It protects. So Jannah. So we talked about Jannah and Jannah. So Jannah also is hiding whatever behind it to, for protection. Tab Jannah means the creation which is hidden. Yani there is a barrier. There is a barrier between you and them. Your eyes, your human eyes, cannot see them, but they are there. You cannot see the electricity, but you can. You know it is there, because once you switch on, the circuit closes and the light turns on. We know, you know electricity is there, but you don't know what it looks like. Okay, so that's also another thing. Jin, the creation which is hidden. From what are they created? Allah Azza Jal told us in the Quran, وَالْجَنَّ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ Nar, it's called the Nar al-Samum. Also Allah said, مِنْ مَارِجٍ مِنْ نَار Flame of fire. So those are the ayat of the Quran. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, narrated in Sahih Muslim, hadith of Aisha, she said, خُلِقَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خُلِقَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ نُور Engines are created from light. وَخُلِقَ الْجَانُّ مِنْ نَار And the jinn from fire. وَخُلِقَ آدَمُ مِمَّا غُصِفَ لَكُمْ And Adam is created from what has been described to you, يعني from the soil, then from mud, then became clay, then become like a hardened clay. Then after that, Allah shaped him and then Allah blew the soul and Adam became Adam. That's the first human being. That, that process only happened to one, Adam. After that, we know how the, you know, between man and woman and all that. So the hadith, the ayat and the hadith saying that the jinn created from fire, from a powerful fire, and from the pure part of the fire, you know when you have a fire, you see in the middle of the fire, there is the purest part of the fire, the white part of the fire, that glowing. And then you see the flames coming up. You know these flames, they come and separate from the fire like this. So this is the part that the jinn created from. So it is there, but it disappears. So, to, hear, to understand it, if you are sitting on the, your back to that wall, and then there is a heat source behind it, you can feel that heat source. So the fire exists, but you don't see it. There is a barrier between you and the fire. So you see the fire in front of you, but there is a part of the fire that it disappeared. So the heat is there, the power, and also shows you the flame. It flies. It means the jinn has that ability also. Uh, to go everywhere.
they were created way more than the mankind and they lived on this earth and they had they had messengers and they had books they had civilizations but then they shed blood and they transgressed and they disbelieved so Allah Azza Jal sent armies of angels that defeated them and pushed them away many of them in caves under the sea the water many of them mountains and that is where the jinn lives until our time that's why whenever you go to a deserted place or you go to a place that you don't know or a place that you go there for first time say bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fi samaa wa as-sami'u al-alim in the name of Allah with whose name nothing in her earth or heavens will hurt me and he is the all hearer all knowledgeable Allah Azza Jal said that the jinn created before humans in Quran وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ who created humans from this hardened clay وَالْجَانَّ خَلَقْنَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ and the jinn who created before that in Surah Al-Hijr verse 26-27 some of the scholars said they are created 2000 years before humans and there is no dalil for that just a statement there is no, nothing to prove that they were created 2000 years before A jinn the Arab gives them names based on their categories when they talk about jinn in general they call jinn and the singular is jinni jinni with a ya shadda jinni that is jinni is a is a the singular jinniya female jinniyun wa jinniyatun wal jam'u jinnun jinn that's general uh, species and the general uh, general type if they they refer to the jinn that lives with humans yeah there are there is a part of jinn that they live with humans and they live around us they call them ummar and the singular is amir yeah and ummar means the residence of the place so there are ummar for this masjid ummar for the house your house ummar for the and they don't interfere with you they don't do anything they have their own dimension it's not like they are with you and they don't see you when you change your clothes and they don't do that that's why Rasulullah said Satru ma bayna a'yun al-jinn bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim you say bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim when you change your clothes when it's awra and all, all of these things so it's very very important this is called Ummar there are some jinn the Arab used to refer to that the jinn who would affect the children that's why there is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the Maghrib time comes bring your children home after the Maghrib is done they can go out again or they can bring bring them back but that moment of sunset the sunset like the 15-20 minutes before and the 15-20 minutes after that's not a time for children to be running around because this is the time that the jinn is running around too and they call them arwah arwah like spirits they mean jinn but those who affect the children now if they become evil the jinn is evil and div deviant and causes corruption they call him shaitan they call him what shaitan if he had superpower and all of this they become ifrit ifrit that's why when a child is very hyper you said you are ifrit in an arabic language you said هذا الولد عفريت صح عفريت means jumping up and down it's not like a normal kid يعني. so عفريت من الجن is the one with super power who told Sayyidina Sulaiman I'm going to bring you the arsh before you stand up I have that power يعني. طيب those are the names that the Arab refer to not necessarily jinn identify themselves like that but the, they give that uh, Arab give that name but what are the 
the types defined by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said al-jinnu thalathatu asnaf this hadith is sahih narrated in Tabarani wal hakim wal bayhaqi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said jinn are three types sinfun yatiru fil hawa yani flying they are like airborne you know airborne means they are like flying they have that ability to fly وصنفٌ حياتٌ وكلاب يعني one type is like actual snakes and dogs you have snakes and dogs as a species but you have some snakes and some dogs that jinn in the format of you know dog and snake but they are jinn you will not be able to distinguish يعني of course but Rasulullah said some that's why whenever you have a snake you don't just go and kill the snake First, you give them a chance to go away and not hurt you. Or capture them and give them to someone to handle them, right? But going straight and killing the snake is a problem. If you kill a human being, they will come after you and your family, right? Same thing, if you kill a jinn without a reason. So that's why you say it in the name of Allah, I let you go. And you give three times. You know, three times qasam, يعني, you know, I make oath on you by Allah Azza Jal to leave us alone. And you do that, and if they don't, you, you kind of kill them. Right? Especially if it's a big snake. It happened at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that one Sahabi, he just got married. And he went to the masjid, and then he come back from the masjid, and he find his wife in front of the house with her sleeping clothes, يعني, sleeping gown. And he becomes so irritated and he wants to hurt his wife. Going to attack his wife and this shame. Where were you? What are you go doing? And you, why are you outside the house like this, you know? She told him, don't, don't rush, يعني. go inside and look. So he goes inside and he finds in his bed a big snake coiled up. So he took his spear and he went and hit the snake. So the snake squeezed him. It was like a constricting boa or something right so they both killed each other right so then they went to rasulullah so rasulullah sallam said some of the jinn they're like that so you have to order them to leave you alone first if they refuse then you kill them so that's why rasulullah sallam said there is a type of jinn that they are snakes and dogs and another type which is like us. They travel, they stay, they move, they go, and, and this is the majority of them. So part fly, part like the shape of animals, specifically dogs and snakes, and the other part is like uh, us. Some people, they denied the existence of jinn completely and some of them mushrikeen yani, in the old time they said they are the spirits of the stars you know astrology is a big sign science they connect the letters of arabic with numbers numerical to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim has the value of six eight seven seven eight six something like that, and every letter has a numerical value. They add that, and then the moon aligns with Mars, aligns with that. That means you are born in that day. That means you are Iris, and Iris, you know, they will go that way, right? So that means this is not a happy time for you. The best day for you is Saturday, and you know they will go that. The best stone for you is such and such, and the best of the days is this, and the best hour is that. And your letter is this. So you need to go and say that name of Allah. <laughs> They're going to do these calculations and these things. So they said that the jinn is like the spirits of arwah, yani this, the stars and all of that. Some of the philosophers said jinn means the evil tendencies of humans. And the angels the good tendencies of humans, so they denied both. Now, 
some say the jinn are the viruses and the you know, bacteria and viruses and all that that would hurt someone. Even some of the people, Muslim scholars in academia, academia they said that the jinn is a type of angels and there is no such a thing called jinn, right? But the angels was different role, yani. Not knowing, yani they said we don't know anything about them. And they use this as a proof that they don't exist. Which is not right. Yani not knowing it does, is not a proof of non-existence. When you don't know about something, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We don't know about many things in this world, right? But it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, Allah Azza wa says Surah Yunus, verse 39, They deny what they don't have enough knowledge of. And they say this Quran is, is magic. Did you read it? No. Do you know it? No. Do you try to understand it? No. So how you judge it? They don't have enough knowledge, but yet they judged. People thought that there are no voices except what you hear in front of you. Now somebody invented the radio, huh? And they started getting the voices from the <laughs> and someone is speaking in, a, in an area and then the field, the magnetic waves and all that travels and then you catch them from the that means voices are out there. And how, how did it happen? How did it come from the station to your radio? How the sound came from the station to the radio? All the radio, transistor, you know, remember there was a radio before that is like wireless. You put, uh, you put uh, batteries in it and it has a magnet and it catches and you go now. How yani, the, the voices came? When you are driving in your car, you know, how did, does the voice come to the radio? This chip or this thing in there. That means there is something in, the, the, in this world, right? Something in this world. So there are voices there. So now we know that there are voices everywhere. You know, they say this, this space is not empty. It's crowded out there. <laughs> it's crowded out there. You believe it. Why? Because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We don't hear it doesn't mean. Correct? Like someone you're not hearing. If we have like a hearing device, you can hear those who are speaking far from you. Sah? That means the voice is there, but you're not hearing it. Okay? There is the ultrasound. You know, very low pitch, low, low, low pitch, then you cannot hear it. Very high pitch, you cannot hear it. Very high, you cannot hear it. It will destroy your eardrum. Very low, you cannot hear it. That's why the dogs and the cats, they hear the, that, those sounds. Before the earthquake or before something, they hear it. Okay? They hear that. That's why you make a low uh, ultrasound thing and the dog will run away. Correct? Because it's low frequency. Same thing with the eye. You know, put an X-ray, it shows the bones. But with your eyes you cannot see through. Right? So it does not mean it doesn't exist. It exists. There are abilities that you, you see. That's why Allah said, فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غطاك فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حديد. So when a person dies, Allah take that غطاء, that barrier out. So now your ruh sees things differently. Sees things. See the sky, the heavens, see the angels, the shayateen, you see lots of things. Subhanallah. The jinn different from humans and from angels. And they have brains, they have sanity, they understand, they are not uh, bacteria, they are not uh, viruses. And they are ordered also, and they will be punished or rewarded based on their deeds. Inshallah, next time we'll talk about the Dalils from the Quran and Sunnah about the angels. 
and uh, we continue this interesting topic inshallah rabbil alameen sakunallahu khair alhamdulillah rabbil alameen go ahead anybody want to have a question please No. Uh, you said that when we die, the roh sees things differently. So where, where are the roh uh, beside it? Beside it? In our body? No, after we die. In Alam al Ruh, there's a different life, Fil Barzakh, which is not this dimension, which is not the dimension of Al Akhirah, but it's something in the middle. Barzakh is the barrier, yani. Like by now, Barzakh is the Barzakh is the not in the akhirah, not in the dunya. So the time and the space is not there. You know, we, we have a time and space, right? This is our space, we are here now. You cannot say that I'm anywhere else but here. And we are at this minute, not before, not future, right? But once you die, this doesn't apply to you anymore. The night and the day and what you see, what you hear, what you experience is completely different. So that's why there is no connection between this one and that one. Yani, the people of in the in the world of ruh after it leaves the body, they don't come and watch what we're doing, and we don't have access to them, like people think we do. We don't. So they are in a completely different world. That's why, in the Hadith, Rasul said, when a believer dies, he is met with his believing family. In Barzakh. When you are in the grave, the body is in that grave, in that spot, right? But the ruh is in a different direction, you know. It, it is in a different way. It's with the body, but not with the body at the same time. It's like you are sleeping in your bed, but you are traveling everywhere else. You, you, you understand? So Rasul said, you die like you sleep, and you will be resurrected like you wake up. It's like that, but not the same. So your body is physically in place, but you are experiencing many things, and sometimes in pain or happiness or joy, you know, different. So same thing. Your, your body physically in the grave in a way, but your ruh is in the alab al ruh. So Rasulullah said they all meet that person and greet them, like his grandparents and great grandparents and family and uncles and everybody. And then they say salam to him or her. And they started asking him or her about those still alive. Mada fa'ala fulan or mada fa'ala fulan? What happened to such person? What happened to such person? He said, oh, he did not come to you? They say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. What does that mean? Means he says, he already died. Right? But they don't know that. They are asking about somebody who already died, but he's not with them. That means he's in hellfire. Yani. You get it? So they're asking him, what happened to Fulan? Such and such. He said, he died. They didn't he come to you? Then they say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. He didn't come to us. So what does that prove? That in Alam al Ruh, you meet with the people, but they don't have access to what is happening. Otherwise, why they would ask that question? What happened to your mother? What happened to your daughter? What happened to your sister? What happened to such person? Because they don't know. Until you go there, they will know. What does that mean? Means there is no connection between the Ruh, Alam al Ruh, so we don't know. If we don't know what is Ruh, we don't know where it lives. <laughs> now. طيب بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين. So we're going to make